Little did the Johnsons know that their little kid would have such a close relationship with the puppy they adopted as a puppy, as their three-month-old infant dozed off one day, they watched in awe as the puppy played, the Johnsons would have believed it to the moon if someone had told them they would see the most touching sight of their lives in the first three months after giving birth. They were sure that their newborn kid was the cutest thing ever. They might have been more suspicious. Though, if the same individual had brought up the fact that young Joey wouldn't be alone in this scene with any of them, at this young age, they were hesitant to put their little son in the care of another person, still, no one told them anything, and the cheerful family was simply grinned at as they were released from the hospital. Everyone on the trip home thought their day had reached its peak, nevertheless. Destiny had another plan all along, a little figure sprawled in the center of the street caught Mrs. Johnson's attention as she drove along the peaceful residential road ahead, at first, Mr. Johnson was unable to discern anything and suspected that his wife might be experiencing mild delirium due to medicine, still, she wouldn't budge, so he swung around to look, a small, trembling figure did, in fact, lie in the center of the road, Mr. Johnson decelerated the vehicle and stepped out to examine it further, they didn't come across puppies in such a mess very often, so something was definitely wrong, he drew nearer and saw how severe the puppy's illness was, he scooped her up and escorted her into the comfort of their car without a second thought, with the puppy in tow, her husband showed tremendous generosity, which touched Mrs. Johnson greatly, as she saw the frail puppy struggle to gain weight, her heart broke, little more than a month old, its mother had probably abandoned it to fend for itself in the huge scary metropolis without the intervention of Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, the puppy's chances of survival were slim. They knew they had a lot to talk about and arrange, so they hurried home with their newborn and the puppy, after they were all set up, they started thinking about what was coming up next, despite her reservations about keeping the puppy, Mrs. Johnson was in favor of helping it, taking on the additional responsibility of caring for a puppy seemed like an even bigger undertaking than raising a newborn, but Mr. Johnson had grown quite attached to the puppy by that point, he dreamed of a perfect future where they would raise a family and the puppy would be a beloved friend to their future kid, Mrs. Johnson gave in and decided to keep the puppy, swayed by hormones and the idea's real attraction, however, they chose to take her to the vet first for a comprehensive examination while on the way to the vet, they decided on the name, C, for the adorable puppy, which is both lovely and appropriate given her mild disposition, they started making preparations for the little things that would make her feel at ease and hoped that she would make a full recovery. The fact that C was terribly underweight and undernourished suggests that she had been fighting for her life alone for quite a while, they were lucky to have found her at the last possible second, when we checked in with the vet the next day, they were happy to report that C had made a full recovery after responding positively to therapy. Their main point was that things may have turned out far worse if she hadn't been Discovered when she was, it seemed as though their meeting with C was predetermined, Mrs. Johnson couldn't shake the sensation that fate was on their side, nevertheless, a fresh obstacle emerged, C's continued weakness and illness prevented her from being officially adopted, she has to recover enough to permanently join her foster family, as she was found as a stray, so she can stay with them. The veterinarian said that C would probably need around four weeks to heal, and that a lot may happen in that time. The foster family's intentions about her adoption or placement with other families were a source of anxiety for the Johnsons, but they had already decided to adopt C, they went to the vet with a plan, promising to come back and officially adopt her if no one had claimed her after a month, the Johnsons were worried about C's progress during the first month and called the clinic frequently to check on her. They were torn between wanting to bring her home and hoping she had already found a loving family, thankfully, C was still on the clock. It seemed as if she were waiting for the Johnsons to come back because none of the interested families followed through, they gathered their little one and made their way to the clinic to pick up C, after a month had passed, they barely recognized her when they saw her again, a healthy body, a shiny coat, and more energy made her look much better. The fact that C's ears perked up at the sound of Mrs. Johnson's voice was evidence of her. Affection for them, feeling that their family was now whole, they joyfully welcomed her home, despite the enthusiasm, they were cognizant of the difficulties that lay ahead, their lives were noticeably busier after welcoming a rescued puppy into their home, caring for a newborn and a puppy at the same time was incredibly challenging, 
but their love and compassion drove them to persevere. They took turns making sure C was loved and cared for, and C, in turn, was peaceful and kind, happy to be. In their company, her preferred places to relax were, strangely enough, beneath Mr. Johnson's feet or inside his vacant slipper, it was touching to see C go from a weak, undernourished puppy to a healthy, active dog with the help of her loving family. Upon her return from the clinic, she appeared fragile and frightened, as if she harbored residual fears from her earlier encounters. She transformed into an entirely new dog, though, her boundless delight shining through, the Johnsons discovered. Tremendous joy in caring for Joey and C. Even though it was difficult and required constant attention, they fantasized about the day their labor would be rewarded, seeing themselves and their child enjoying carefree summer afternoons spent playing in the garden, still, a trace of concern remained within the delight. Even though they were thrilled about the idea of Joey getting a pet, they were worried about leaving them alone, they proceeded with caution. Not knowing how C would act with the baby, they were paralyzed with terror. After seeing disturbing footage of infants left alone with dogs, any danger to their cherished boy was something they feared the most. The Johnsons remained anxious despite the reassurances of their friends, who mentioned cases where dogs had become devoted siblings to infants. According to their beliefs, such happy partnerships usually developed when the dog had lived in the house prior to the baby's birth. Their worries were already high before they even welcomed C into their lives, the stakes were already high and the fact that C was at the same gestational age as their baby further added to the anxiety, Joey was in such amazement of the little puppy even at three months old, so they let him watch C play, squeals of joy would frequently escape his lips whenever C appeared or whenever he was seated next to his dad although C was just as captivated by Joey the newborn. She was far more mobile and could roam about Joey's environment at will, despite C's obvious curiosity. The Johnsons were cautious about allowing her to go too near, so they restricted her to sniffing at Joey's toys, their fears prevented them from interacting with her despite her obvious wish to play with him, yet, events can and do take surprising turns, and they were in for yet another shock from fate, Joey was sound asleep on the floor on his playmat one day when Mrs. Johnson went out for a moment to go to the restroom, she departed for just a little while, having faith that her kid, who was three months old, would stay put, nevertheless, a sensation of unease swept over her when she returned, sensing that something was off, she returned to the room in a panic, but it wasn't Joey who had shocked her this time, Joey was sound asleep when she looked over to see C standing over him, having managed to get herself free from her box in the next room, Mrs. Johnson was unsure about what to do, she wanted to run and get her son, but she was also curious about what was going to happen next, they eagerly awaited his arrival as she softly summoned him to join her, as C sniffed at her younger brother's head and tried to gently nut him, she seemed truly worried about his health, even if she seemed oblivious to their presence, the Johnsons watched eagerly, though, because she was weak, who knows what she'd do, Joey, would he awaken, how about they step in, Mr., Johnson was alert for any danger and prepared to intervene if needed. What happened next, though, won them over, little C seemed to understand Joey's frailty, she chose to show her affection by laying her head on his and gently shutting her eyes, they were both sound asleep in no time, the heartfelt moment touched the hearts of the Johnsons, the three-month-old puppy's tenderness and care for the infant were beyond words, their previous worries and fears were dispelled by this unexpected and joyful sight, they couldn't help but burst out laughing as they recalled their first worries. What their pals had been trying to say was now crystal clear to them, Mr., Johnson couldn't help but take a picture of the priceless occasion, he took out his phone and captured the tranquil moment, which perfectly captured the tender, unwavering love they had, he was so moved by the scene that he decided to post the video online in the hopes that it would bring joy to others and encourage them to support animals in need. He was trying to get people to adopt instead of buy a puppy by showing them how cute and loving a rescued puppy can be, the video went viral on social media and rapidly gained traction. The touching friendship between Joey and the rescued puppy was the subject of numerous heartfelt messages of praise, many people were moved by the touching story of the Johnsons, and the message of kindness and love that the couple conveyed touched the lives of many, the video became a symbol of empathy and hope as it went viral, Mr. Johnson used this opportunity to promote the adoption of pets. 
highlighting the deep bond that can be formed between rescued animals and their new owners, because of his advocacy, more people are willing to donate to animal shelters and rescue groups, which has a multiplicative effect on the lives of many animals, including C. When word got out about the family's first contact with C, her story became even more popular, donations of all kinds poured in once word got out about the veterinary clinic's involvement in C's treatment. Donations were received by the clinic from fellow animal adopters who wanted to show their appreciation for the care that C and other animals received because of this kindness, the Johnsons decided to start a non-profit and donate all of the money to the animal refuge that had been planned for C, their goal was to bring attention to the good influence the institution had on their community through events like an annual run and more opportunities to interact with animals in shelters as if they were reincarnated souls. Many thought C and Joey's meeting was a stroke of fate, it didn't matter if this was true or not, what? Did matter was that Joey would have a friend for life, their tale was a moving tribute to the power of destiny and friendship, feelings regarding animals getting near to young children and whether or not one would have stopped for the little puppy are subjective topics, nonetheless, the young pair should put an emphasis on being responsible pet owners and prioritizing safety. It is of the utmost importance to introduce pets to children in a proper manner, closely monitor their interactions, and make sure the pet is healthy. Asking for advice from specialists or other pet owners with expertise can also be helpful, building positive relationships between kids and pets, characterized by mutual respect and affection, can have profound benefits for everyone concerned. That's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. A retired police dog's owner decided to call the cops after the dog began barking obsessively at an unusual tree, after that, something shocking came to light inside the trees. Hollow revealing a secret that put the cops in risk, the retired police dog Zena's owner, John, had unwavering faith in her intuition and gave her a great deal of freedom, one of her perks was being able to run free in the woods without a leash because of her extraordinary training, John would let her go exploring as long as she promised to come back quickly when he told her to. Zena exhibited remarkable restlessness one day, stopping often to listen carefully and sniff the air, John hadn't seen her act so erratically since he adopted her until she ran away, completely ignoring his calls, John had a hard time keeping up with her as she plowed ahead, her resolve evident in her growls, when he lost sight of his mysterious companion, he felt driven to track the farthest echoes of her bark in order to find her, John was puzzled by Zena's uneasiness when he found her barking at a big, dead tree. He could see the trees hollow, but what was inside was hidden, John put her intuition to. The test and concluded that Zena had found something important, though shrouded in mystery, John chose to undertake his own investigation, searching for clues, instead of rushing to involve the authorities without fully understanding. After futilely trying to peel off a piece of bark, John decided to look into other options. To John's horror, he found a hollow-sounding location on the tree and, using a sharp rock, he peeled back the bark to reveal a startling discovery, a hand had emerged, he immediately called the police after realizing how serious the situation was. John, who had gone out to find a trustworthy dog friend, ended up in a far more disturbing and unexpected situation than he had anticipated. The authorities were bewildered at first, but after hearing John out, they understood the seriousness of the issue, identified him as the new owner of Xena, and recognized the importance of the discovery he had made. The authorities sent Jerry, Xena's ex-partner, to investigate after receiving the coordinates, realizing the seriousness of the situation. Jerry hurried to the scene, motivated by his unfaltering faith in Zena, the atmosphere was electric with anticipation, attention was demanded by her signals, which were weighty, Zena wasn't just a co-worker, she had been Jerry's reliable friend for many years, a friendship strengthened by overcoming obstacles together, such as their most recent terrifying case, in which they were both wounded in an ambush. While Jerry was in the hospital, Zena decided to retire because of her tremendous loyalty to him, which she displayed at her own sacrifice. Jerry was devastated to learn, upon his release from the hospital, that Zena had been secretly placed for adoption. As soon as Jerry stepped foot in the jungle, he could hear Zena's resounding barks. Zena was startled to hear his voice and ran enthusiastically toward him as he ordered her to stop barking so enthusiastically. Zena jumped up showered Jerry with attention, and then gingerly sniffed the location of his previous injury, as if assuring 
His healing, despite her training telling her otherwise, the joy in their reunion was evident, the implicit link between Jerry and Zena became apparent as John approached, wanting to explain their findings and inquisitive about Zena's unusual excitement for this stranger, John respectfully stepped back when he realized their connection, yet Jerry stared intently at the tree, and what he saw shocked even him. To ensure the safety of the area and to help cut down the tree without damaging any evidence, more police were dispatched. Zena, who usually stays at crime scenes until she's needed, was unmoved, keeping John there even after he tried to leave, as John watched the forensics team painstakingly remove the bark, he noticed some strange things coming out of the trunk, like a shiny name tag that was catching the light and revealing what seemed like a human form unexpectedly shocking, the discovery was much more shocking than expected, amidst the shock. The most shocking thing was the finding of a bloodstained police uniform, even though the tag read M, a closer look revealed an unusual figure, which only served to heighten suspicions, the forensics experts identified the object as a mannequin covered in a lifelike outfit, its flesh soaked with actual human blood, this unsettling discovery made them wonder more about the terrifying scenario they were in. Dahl, dressed as an officer in a uniform covered with blood was noticed by Jerry, who was determined to solve the mystery, the doll was dangling from a tree. He said he needed help because the problem was complicated, and his reliable ex-partner appeared to be the most qualified candidate involving Zena in the probe required John's assent, which he gladly gave, as he was relieved to finally be left alone, Zena's determination to stay put her want to contribute into perspective, and John could feel her admiration for that, Jerry. Awed by Zena's extraordinary abilities, gave her permission to start the tracking procedure by smelling the garments in a bag, thanks to her extraordinary sense of smell, Zena led Jerry by the hand as she deftly made her way through the woods, Zena was clearly the best of the bunch, even though Jerry had experience with a lot of police dogs, Zena stopped in a clearing after a short pursuit and located the scent's origin, unfortunately, she was unable to find any further hints because her skills had been exhausted, upon closer inspection. Jerry noticed tire tracks in the dirt, which led him to believe that a car was involved in the act of placing the doll in the tree. Jerry considered saving the tire tracks for comparison purposes because Zena's tracking skills was restricted by the vehicle's limited involvement in order to fully grasp the intricate scenario, Jerry and Zena recognized they required additional proof before digging further, going back to the station, they wanted to find out who the officer named Mike was. Zena was enthusiastically welcomed by her fellow department members, who remembered her as a legendary character recognizing the deep connection they had and the emotional toll that Zena's adoption had on Jerry, the reunion was well received, the hunt started as Zena settled into her usual spot next to Jerry's table, the records of the force show that there was just one officer named Mike throughout the past year, unfortunately, Mike had retired from the police force, just a few months ago, he was photographed photographing confidential material, which led to his dismissal for evidence tampering, distinct from standard. Procedure, Jerry found the absence of a formal investigation into his conduct to be strange Officer Mike's blood type matched the blood found at the scene, according to preliminary data from the forensic team, this information was released while Jerry was still deep into the search, finding a doll stained with the ex-offender's blood without any trace of the officer perplexed Jerry, next. He saw tire marks that made him wonder even more, they matched Mike's car record to a T if Jerry wanted. To find out what was going on with the doll and why Officer Mike was mysteriously missing, he had to go to his house, which was the next logical step in solving the mystery. The house gave the impression of being deserted, with stacks of unopened mail piling up on the doorstep after what seemed like an eternity, nothing seemed out of the ordinary, and there were no telltale symptoms of an unsettling event that would lead one to suspect the worst but then a worried neighbor came out and gave. Jerry and Zena a story that made the strange situation even more mysterious. Mike had been missing for what seemed like months, if not weeks, according to the neighbor, he disappeared without a trace, Mike always had someone take care of his mail, so his absence at first was taken for a vacation, the neighbor, on the other hand, revealed that once Mike was fired, his conduct altered dramatically, instead of being the amiable, outgoing person he usually was. He ramped up the security surrounding his house, the mystery of Mike's sudden departure and the changed dynamics of 
His behavior after firing only made Jerry and Zena's quest for an answer more difficult, a further layer of uncertainty was added to the evolving situation when the neighbor was unable to clarify the nature of Mike's actions, there was a change in him that he could see, she thought Mike's outfit on the day he left to be very strange when asked about it, his police uniform, which was now lying bleeding in the forensic lab, remained on him even after he was fired from the force, in her pursuit of Danger, Jerry had Zena search the area thoroughly, but she found nothing worrisome, he put her intuition to the test, knowing that Zena would have pointed out Mike's whereabouts if he had been there, injured, hidden, or whatever, they were prepared to go further into the developing mystery when they returned to the office and found no indications of danger within the house, the police captain welcomed them as they entered the office, but he first gave Zena a scornful look unanswered was the question of how she had come back, but the order to withdraw from Mike's case was quickly communicated to Jerry by the captain, because of the possible bias that could arise from Mike's dismissal from their department, another precinct would take over, considering the clandestine adoption of Zena that took place while Jerry was in the hospital for treatment, Jerry had no love for the captain, reluctance was caused by the captain's demand that Jerry step away from the matter, Jerry was hellbent. On finding out what happened, but the investigator was more concerned with getting to the bottom of things, he had a feeling that another cop might not take the matter seriously and treat it like it was just concerning a doll, still, Jerry had his doubts that this strange tale had more going on than met the eye, never one to let anything slip between the cracks, Jerry kept digging and eventually made a major find. Despite his assurances to the captain that he would back off, Jerry believed the cottage that Mike's grandpa owned in the woods would make a decent hiding place, so he went looking for it, instead of waiting, he quickly sought Zena's assistance and the two of them set out to find it, shockingly, they found the cabin door ajar and, out of the blue, Mike came charging out of the woods, where he had been diligently cutting firewood, upon seeing Mike's bruised and enlarged face, Jerry and Zena were so startled that they tried to flee from him right away, but Zena's undying devotion was on full display as, she sprang on top of him and held him down, at first, Mike freaked out, but he soon realized that they weren't trying to harm him, Mike finally opened up and detailed the confusing events that had caused his bruised appearance after a few anxious minutes of building trust, an instance that resulted to Mike's termination from the force occurred a few months ago when he was discovered photographing official documents. Even though he was fired, that was only a minor incident in a much bigger and more complex saga, his seizure of documents exposed a major secret, proof that the captain had been taking bribes from a powerful businessman to ignore wrongdoing, the large sum of money suggested that the businessman was heavily involved in illegal activities, the captain saw Mike taking pictures of this damning proof, which led to his dismissal, ever since that incident, Mike had resolved to reveal the captain's underhanded transactions on that particular day, Mike intended to present his results to the chief of police while dressed as a police officer, but he was ambushed en route, which is why Jerry and Zena were visibly hurt, three males, who disapproved of Mike's investigations, assaulted him as he helped a stranded woman fix a flat tire, Mike came up with a last-ditch strategy in the face of unrelenting pursuit and uncertainty about who to trust, he snagged a CPR dummy, dressed as a police officer, and hid it in a hollow tree to buy himself time from his pursuers. In spite of his dread and the visible signs of a violent altercation on his clothing, Mike continued to navigate the complex network of dishonesty that he had discovered, he chose solitude and went into hiding while he dealt with the perilous and complicated situation he found himself in, Jerry reassured Mike of his support by pledging his trust and dedication to finding the truth, a different voice suddenly cut into their chat as the captain, armed with a weapon, emerged from the woods, the captain admitted his evil doings in a disturbing confession, saying he couldn't let his crimes be exposed, as a result of his crippling dread of ruin, the captain was hell-bent on preventing Jerry and Mike from getting to the bottom of things, the captain came clean about his lifelong fear of Jerry and Zena discovering a secret, which is why he took extreme measures to keep them apart, in the face of possible exposure, he considered a longer-term strategy to protect his secret plan, the captain, his true colors exposed, cocked his weapon, but Zena's lightning reflexes rendered him helpless, Jerry wasted no time in moving in to capture the captain, ending his ability to cause harm or carry out his cunning plans, after the grueling struggle was over, Mike was redeemed through reinstatement, 
and Jerry was justifiably promoted to captain for his perseverance and self-assurance, they worked together to build a strong case against the notorious businessman, bringing an end to his criminal enterprise and ensuring that he would face the full force of law in the form of a long prison term. But another sad moment was on the horizon among all the victories, John, Zena's original owner, went to the station to get his beloved pet back, still, it was a bittersweet reunion, despite her compliance, Zena seemed reluctant to depart from Jerry's side, making melancholy noises and avoided making eye contact with John, John could feel the police officers and the dog's unspoken bond, even though it hurt, he saw the connection and shared history between them because John knew how close Zena was to Jerry, he chose to be generous, once he saw Jerry and Zena were meant to be together, he sent his best wishes their way, his sole requests were for updates on a frequent basis and the opportunity to occasionally walk Zena since Jerry would be taking on the role of captain, their contacts with challenging events would probably decrease, acknowledging the strong bond between the two best friends. But their unfaltering bond remained strong, and they were prepared to confront any obstacle as a team, that's all about this story and now let's watch another similar one, onlookers were amazed by the six German shepherds perfect obedience as they watched a guy quietly walk with them, a number of people thought the man was using force to keep the animals under control, but when the mystery of the scene was finally unveiled, their astonishment reached new levels, people in Hyannis, Massachusetts, were astounded to see Augusto de Oliveira walking the streets, an experienced German shepherd. Leader in his early twenties, was expertly guiding a large pack of closely knit dogs, the exceptional unity, discipline, and coordination displayed by these canines was apparent right from the start, their justifiably renowned leader, Augusto, stood proudly at the heart of this peaceful display as the pack leader, people were taken aback by this remarkable performance, which contrasted absolute dominance with unfaltering subordination, the incredible display of canine skill and the bond between Humans and animals piqued the interest of many passers-by. Who were left fascinated and enthralled, people started to suspect Augusto as they tried to figure out what had caused his extraordinary success, even though a lot of people in the town had dogs of their own, no one had ever seen a group of German shepherds work together so well as Augusto did, no one could solve the mystery, not even other professionals in the field of canine training and animal behavior. The dog's capacity to coordinate their movements in perfect harmony despite the extreme. Discord was incomprehensible, approaching the pack with caution, the curious viewers discovered something incredible, despite the lack of leashes, the German shepherds moved as if connected by invisible cords, much like sled dog teams, the sound of Augusto's voice was all it took for the dogs to instantly know their position and line up, they were as disciplined as a well-drilled army platoon, unlike in most dog meetings. There were no fights or battles for control, nothing could stop Augusto's. Pack as they marched in perfect unison, not even passing dogs, they paid no mind to the howls of other dogs chained to their owners or fenced in yards, instead, they were dead set on the activities of their small, tight-knit pack and their respected leader, Augusto, onlookers were utterly awestruck when the Hyannis residents set out on their regular strolls around the town's parks and streets. Many were enchanted by this remarkable demonstration of canine control and would often approach Augusto. Asking to be photographed with the remarkable pack, Augusto could arrange the dogs for an ideal photo stance with the single command of a button, Augusto repositioned the dogs under his legs with the simple whistle when the enthusiastic spectators had their fill, the town went wild for this young man and his incredible pack very quickly. Disconcerting concerns that something much darker might be going on quickly emerged as a result of murmurs and rumors some of his neighbors and passers-by had. Long-standing animosities towards the man who seemed to value his dogs more than human companionship, Augusto appeared to have social anxiety, he had few friends and family visiting him and rarely interacted with others as the sun went down. Curious onlookers would gather outside his apartment, scouring the blinds for any sign of how a quiet man could lead a pack of vicious dogs. The general public worried that he would mistreat the dogs or else use extreme measures to control them, some even went to the extent of looking through his. Trash for clues, a neighbor who was very interested in helping strays was certain that Augusto used electric shock collars on his dogs to make them obey, this same woman went door to door in her area to collect signatures on a petition, the Augusto dog owner she thought was abusive would be the target of her research, 
and she was hell-bent on getting the police involved. But Augusto might have cleared everyone's fears by being forthright and explaining his training methods, sadly, he maintained. An unusually low level of candor when asked about his methods, he had no idea that his unwillingness to reveal his tactics had done nothing but raise suspicions, to be honest, he would only grudgingly acknowledge that he was able to educate his dogs to walk confidently in public without leashes because he was incredibly patient and dedicated, to be fair, everyone acknowledged this as being correct. The fact that he had spent his entire life honing his skills as a dog trainer was common knowledge. The courageous and devoted German shepherds have a special place in Augusto's heart, these canines had an innate need to defend the things that were important to them, and they were prepared to risk everything to keep their family safe. Anyone could have seen that Augusto would be protected at the cost of their lives by this devoted gang of dogs. But the police began looking after the detailed accusation of possible animal abuse when this unfaltering devotion eventually caused alarm. Some others couldn't comprehend how these dogs might have been obeying Augusto's commands just out of respect for him. On the contrary, they believed Augusto used dark tactics or perhaps torture to ensure such slavish submission they could have saved themselves the trouble of prying eyes and ignorant citizens by looking into his history, Augusto spent his childhood in Brazil, among German shepherds, but he now calls Massachusetts home, his fascination with animal behavior began at an early age, on a Brazilian farm. Augusto spent many hours with his dogs, and it was almost by accident that he realized he had an inherent talent for shaping their behavior the peculiar and out of the ordinary way of life that augusto and his dogs followed stunned the police officers who visited his residence griffin harmony jenna priscilla hannah and savannah his canine pals were not to be found in their customary kennels or enclosures instead they all slept on the same bed with augusto his pets also had free reign of any carpet or couch in the house his love and devotion to dogs shone through in every aspect of his life, the police were perplexed and had no leads, so they enlisted the help of animal experts, who kept a careful eye on Augusto for days, their examination of the residence and his every move was painstakingly detailed, following this rigorous period of observation, they were ready to provide a comprehensive report outlining their results, thankfully. The authorities did not find any evidence of Augusto's German shepherds being abused or neglected, in fact, these canines seemed to be Living their best lives, it turned out that this instance was a false alarm, but the police and animal rescue services praised the public's vigilance for the welfare of vulnerable canines. Augusto lived like a king with his dogs, showering them with attention and providing them with the finest food and care, they were loved by their owner as much as his own children. Even though Augusto was angry at first at the idea that others could think so negatively of him, he eventually saw the positive side of this strange scenario. Not long after the probe concluded, he transformed his hobby into a successful business in his time and expertise, Augusto developed Griffin Shepherd Kennels to train dogs to be exceedingly submissive and docile, Augusto was entrusted with numerous puppies by dog owners, they would quickly find well-behaved, well-trained dogs that could adjust to any setting, including cramped apartments, and bring them back to their owners. Although Augusto provided training for other types of dogs, his Expertise was clearly on German shepherds, although he kept his training techniques under wraps, this expert did reveal one vital piece of information, he thought his dogs saw him as an essential member of their pack, he stressed that spending a great deal of time together was the only way to develop this special connection, the fact that Augusto fed his dogs twice a day, let them sleep in his room, and made sure they had plenty of exercise helped them accept his authority, as soon as a dog learned his master's cues and behavior patterns, he was immediately considered pack leader, it was genuinely astonishing to see the degree of cohesion and self-control displayed whenever Augusto was out walking his dogs, he confidently led his six German shepherds through Hyannis streets and even claimed to be able to control 15 free-range dogs at once even in the midst of the increased mayhem of a totally new setting. His dogs exhibited faultless conduct when he recently ventured onto the busy streets of Boston. Oh,